Well, here we are back in the Game of Thrones mod with a war that we all sort of knew was coming eventually. Sansa is about to be invaded by the Iron Throne to try and take back control of the North, to bring it back under the Iron Throne, and we as a vassal of the Iron Throne, at least for now, probably need to step up and do something about that. Now, now little Jon Snow here did receive a few uh, a few very good points in his uh, uh through the ravens that's it that's what they get in game of thrones received a few ravens with uh, some some great messages from people in the comments a lot of people pointing out that because we have wildling succession now open succession the most powerful daughter will inherit now this is just the firstborn for now but a lot of people are saying that if we were to uh, make lady aya a bit more a bit more powerful either giving her land or, or finding some other way to do it she would succeed and she is inarguably a much better character to help continue on Jon's legacy currently of, of uniting the wildlings and, you know, getting a bit more in touch with that kind of old gods aspect of things, given that she's got green dreams, which is massive wildling opinion. She's a mystic, which is massive everything. 15% <laughs> plot power increase is quite nice. Um, but more importantly, she's literally strong. I think uh, the other kid was... Yeah, they've got identical inheritable traits. But she's also a Grey Eminence, fantastic for diplomacy, and she's zealous, so much more in touch with the Wildling religion. I think that's not a bad call. So we might start doing something with that. A lot of people also said that when we go to war, well, as we're about to, John would be the person to try and charge Winterfell. He's seen what happens when the Starks go to war. He's seen it, not necessarily firsthand, but he certainly knows the effects of when the Starks go to war with the Iron Throne. What happens? Ned gets beheaded. Rob gets beheaded. Well, not beheaded, but, you know, uh, unalived. I think he would probably want to stop that. You know, despite the fact that Sansa has been just a horrible person, John is honorable to a fault, right? And would certainly try and stop her. Because if she, someone pointed out, you know, if she gets if she gets captured in prison by one of the Southern Lords, chances are her head's going to roll. So this is down to us. This is down to us to try and stop that. Oh, and someone also pointed out it's worth remembering. To be fair, I never played as Wildling before. Uh, the Wildlings do have weaker troops. I think it might be a cultural modifier, right? Um, yeah, is a backwards culture making troops less effective? So even though that one battle we did where, you know, we had the defensive bonuses, we had John leading, the troops themselves just aren't as good. They don't have the armor. They don't have the as fine a steel as the southern troops. So we do have to be a little more careful. I don't, we'll try and, as we go, kind of figure out a good ratio for, you know, how many Wildlings make up for a regular troop. So, let's have a look here. Uh, Magnus Steer resigned. He's not being part of this foreign war. Um, Rory of Ice Bay Shore also resigned there, or, or at least didn't take part in the war. Fair enough. You know what? If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. We'll leave the council position open for now. And we'll probably put him back in uh, in the position of Hand of the King, or the equivalent of Hand of the King. Oh, we've got a crazy alchemist workshop. Jon Snow, part Targaryen, don't forget, but a guy, I, I think he would have an inherent interest in, for the good of his people in being able to produce fire in the, the darkest winters, right? Now, I believe with that, that allows us to make, um, to recruit giants. Shall we recruit the giants? I think we will. Let's go for warriors of the wildling as well. Um, let's go for some cavalry because we don't really have much of that. Forging the Targaryen armor might be a really cool long-term goal for, for him as well. In fact, if he's not a commander, we can do it right away. Ooh. That could be interesting. Would he do that rather than spending the money on restoring Eastwatch, restoring the Shadow Tower? Uh, I think... I think no. I don't think he's... A, I, I mean, the Targaryen armor, though, would be good for battle. Wildling culture. Not really in touch with this Targaryen side at all. In this particular, you know, in this particular outcome. Nothing that would really imply that. Definitely more on the northern side of things. And I don't think he'd spend all that money. Um, wow. Wow. Magnus Steer has not only resigned from the council for us joining a southern war, but he's also declared a, a, an invasion on us, and he's got a lot of bloody troops. Wow. You traitor. Well, then. I guess he had ulterior motives all along. Very Game of Thrones. Uh, let's go stop him. Let's go stop him. Let's turn around. Now we've got to make the decision. Do we want to try and stop Sansa marching to her death? Or do we want to try and defend the wildlings from from the Then just trying to conquer because they can? At this point, Sansa's, Sansa's proven who she is. You know, she tried to invade. And, 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 you know, it's not really... Is it any surprise that the wildlings aren't joining us in the war when Sansa recently tried to invade? Why would we be marching south to try and, you know, capture her safely when she, she 
killed thousands of wildlings. I get it. I understand. So you know what? We're not going to risk. We're not going to risk upsetting them anymore. We're going to. We're going to try and stop then. And if Sansa gets beheaded, Sansa gets beheaded. I mean, realistically, there might not be much we can do to Sansa anyway. Um, we have no time to be swaying him. You know what? At this point, forget it. We were handed the king. He wanted to do a good job and 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 help his king out where he could. But at this point, there's no. There, there is no point. I think. Where is Sansa? Where's she leading troops? She's over in the Dreadfort. Okay. Um. She's got married to her husband, but she still hasn't had an heir. So if she dies now, it would be Eddard Harstark of Hayford, a, a cadet branch, effectively. Wow. Is that really how distant the family's become? Yeah. Master Bran in the Wolf of White Harbor was the original of House Stark. And this is a, this is again, a cadet dynasty, kind of like the same with the, with the Karstarks as well. No, it's the Harstarks. Okay, fair enough. I believe there's a decision where he's allowed, because he's only like four generations away from House Stark, right? I believe that he can undertake a decision to retake the Stark banner because there aren't any other legitimate male Starks out there. Anyway, let's get to work here. Where was John leading troops, if not there, out of curiosity? What, what, like down in Rainhouse, maybe? Uh, Beyond the Wall Army. Yep, maybe. It was probably these guys. Let's just disband them. Otherwise, they're, gonna, they're just going to march to their deaths, aren't they? Now, Then also have the same negative as we do. So we could just charge in here and, uh, you know what? I guess we'll hire a new... You'll do. Chief of the new gift, because we inherited all that land. That will put him in charge. He's a guy who would have, because he is from south of the wall, they might not approve of it, but he knows of, of economies and that type of thing. He's probably been formally trained or educated at some point. You shits. Um, oh, hello. Greta the Skin Changer. We will we will give her an award, because she is, uh, she's been a very good spy master, I presume. She hasn't really done anything noteworthy, but she's a very impressive character. And I don't want to get on her bad side. Here you are. Gretha, this is for you. Are, you. are we really going to do this dance? I mean, it would make sense if we go to the Frost Caves, then spin round if that is slightly faster. He shouldn't be able to run away because unless he runs up to Then, he can't get to here in time because that's the way he was going to escape from us when we were... Yeah, there you go. Charging him down. The Giants are happy to join us. Let's hold off on the Giants. We might not actually need them. All right, here we go. Taking out the traitorous Magna of Then. You blind, my friend. Nella of Crastus Keep was captured in battle. Uh, which well, she was a commander. We can sacrifice her. It is the free folk slash wildling thing to do right now. We offer her up as a sacrifice. Apparently, we're allowed to do it. And you know what? At this point, I think maybe he would. You know, it's, this is an internal wildling affair. The fact that John... I, I think he would just do it because that's the that's the wildling way to do it, right? And if he, beco if he becomes zealous in the process, that would be, be kind of cool. Towards the end of his life here as well, given that he is what right now? 48? That's quite old in Game of Thrones terms, given that the average... I think the average lifespan in the Game of Thrones TV show, at least, is what, like, 25? My chief general tells me one of the commanders, Gretha is improving significantly. She is incredible. I'm glad that we've got her on side. Look at that, 25 marshal. Not only is she an amazing spy master who has, you know, green dreams and everything like that. She would have been an interesting educator, actually, for um, little, little Aya. Yeah, I mean, she's very good at martial as well. Why is that? Does it give skilled fighter strong? I didn't know if any of the green dreams related stuff. Given there's two of them there with very good combat prowess. Gerald Peak. Uh, yeah, whatever. Gerald, marry as you please. 96%. Don't want to siege down then if we can avoid it. Why don't we go back and unsiege the Frost Caves? That'll do it. And I mean, it'll just take to victory now anyway, right? So, oh, he's got some more troops over there. John's not the type of guy that would be burning down the whole things in kind of a vengeful, almost kind of Tywin-esque way. Uh, we won't do anything for now. We're all right. We're in the, we're in the, we've got enough on our plate without potentially alienating vassals. Let's knock it down. There you go. Magnus Steer. I mean, what's he? He just gives us money because he's technically not part of our realm. He was well within his legal rights to do that. But maybe when the realm comes back together, we might get an option to, uh, as he declared war on us, we might be able to do something with that. I don't know. He, he wasn't part of a southern war so i guess he was trying to maybe maybe there is some legal precedent for that trying to prove how much of a, a good ruler is compared to us anyway sorry i don't know why i dropped troops there kind of forgot about the whole San sansa thing danny just kind of forgot about the uh the iron fleet right let's go and i guess stand on the wall again wait for our troops to get over here and then see if we can march south and do something where is sansa is st she's still leading troops she is in hiding She's gone into hiding in Winterfell. 
And if they beat us to it, when they siege it down, her head's probably going to roll. She's a rebel leader. I mean, the king will be well within his right to behead her. Although she's not really a rebel leader, is she? She's an independent realm. That's only, to be fair, been independent for like 20, what, 30 years now? Yeah, 27 years. I don't think he'd be allowed to behead her. Because she's just defending what was given to her as an independent territory. So she'll probably be fine. It's whether or not when she's captured in the war, whether or not they'll behead her just to just to get rid of the last Stark, effectively, right? The Giants are no longer in our employ. That's okay. Probably weren't going to use them anyway. You, my vassal High Chief Barok Lockblood has tried to have Chief Veyron Fenrage of Fort Tucker arrested, but now there's an internal Wildling Rebellion. We're not going to worry about that. That's okay. And look, one more gold, and we can get Eastwatch. Do you want to go for Eastwatch or do you want to go for the Shadow Tower? Uh, that's got the wall, the Trader's Warehouse, some other stuff. Uh, this one has... They're both the same amount of holdings, right? Oh, no, Eastwatch has one more. So it would make more sense, I guess, to go for Eastwatch in that regard. We could give Eastwatch to Aya. That would make a lot of sense. Not only is she a Grey Eminence, you know, a very, very competent ruler. We could... It, it would also give her enough power, right, to, to kick things off. Eastwatch by the sea is ours. There you go. Very nice. So who gains the subholdings? Are they just random? Ruin of the torches. Oh, wait, we have to... Wait, what happened there? Hold of the longbow. Hold of the torches. Still belongs to a ruin. Wait. But we did get those. Strange. I thought we were supposed to get those back. We can revoke it. Weird. I, I wonder if it'll take over when we're done with war. Maybe that'll be the case. Maybe the event can't fire because we're in the middle of war right now. Strange. Yeah, those, are, those aren't supposed to remain ruins, as we saw with, with Castle Flat, right? Um, let's get you... Uh, let's just get you overseeing the realm. I think that's fair enough. Let's get you collecting taxes. See if we can... But if It would be incredible if by the end of John's life we could have the entire wall restored. That would be, that would be actually fantastic. All this food we can grow south. It's not much, you know, New Gift and Brandon's Gift. It is some sort of arable farmland. That's the whole point of why it was given to the Night's Watch in the first place, right? Gifted by got by the North to the Night's Watch. So if we can use that to grow delicious foods for the wildlings, I think that's a good idea. Very attack on Titan right now. Got the farm south of the wall and then <laughs> big friggin' wall trying to keep instead of uh, instead of big old, big old Titans, we've just got Sansa. Not really as impressive, I suppose. Six out of four. What do I want to give away? Um... Ideally, we want to bring all of this back and, and always have the ruler of Castle Black. Unless instead we hold, as the as the leader of the Wildlings, we hold the Shadow Tower, like the main Shadow Tower, Castle Black, and then Eastwatch. We hold all of those. And then the sub-holdings we give away. Maybe. Okay. Well, either way, we'll think about it in a minute. We, we do have to give two away as it stands, but we're probably not going to keep Craster's Keep, right? The Milk Water... I, d I don't necessarily want to give it to this guy because he's like different religion and culture and doesn't quite make sense. Why don't we just find a loyal wildling? Now, in theory, it would be better to keep... Oh, my God. Look at the, look at the best military commanders in the world. It's Jon Snow and then a friggin' dragon. Who else have we got? Kyle, Condon, Brienne is up there. That's cool. Poolin, Bakshi clan. Oh, the Drogos Nahai. Whoa. Hello. Wow, we're like we're like up there. I wasn't expecting that we were the second best warrior in the whole world. That's impressive. I like the fact that Brienne's up there too. That's really cool. Um, yeah, let's let's find someone of our religion and culture to dish out some land to. Um, Steinar Bronzesword. He's a traveler. He's a very good wildling steward. He's quick. He's a brilliant steward. He's their culture, their religion, but knows how to look after the land. Can we bring him in? We cannot bring him in. That's unfortunate. Um, you're not bad, Ardle. He is maybe on the verge of dying. You're a brilliant steward. You know what, let's bring you in then. Sure. You can look after Craster's Keep on, on kind of John's behalf. That seems a good idea. Hello, Chief Lorne has been doing a good job. Oh, 20 gold gone. Thank you, Lorne. 88%. I presume they've already grabbed Winterfell by this point. Oh, they're in the process of doing it. We're not going to get there in time. Look, they're just about to knock it down. Here you are. Craster's Keep is yours. I don't think we really want to keep Craster's Keep, given that it's just an old incestuous man's shack in a field. So that's fine by me to give that one away. Let's give him uh, the milk water. Let's give, him the, let's give him the title. There you are. High Chief Torgren. A very loyal, very skilled wildling vassal. The people will approve of him and he's, he's a great guy to have in charge there. Um, advisor. Advisor Lawther of Brandon's Gift. I think that's a good idea. 
have the guy whose round was just basically given to us as one of our advisors. Northman, old gods, very much doesn't approve. He's, you know, a member of the old guard in that sense. Definitely doesn't approve of us being here. Well, I mean, what are we going to do? Yeah, it's over. Sansa is now just Lady Paramount Sansa of the North. She's now our our vassal, our neighbor. I mean, this is the strongest the Iron Throne has ever been then at this point. It's got the Iron Islands under it. It's got Beyond the Wall. It's got the North back. Is it all gonna, it's all going to come back together. And it's got Pentos. So there's some internal wars right now, which are stopping these guys joining back into the Iron Throne. So Galetta of Dawn. Oh, he died. A natural death. Okay, he wasn't assassinated in, uh, in the end. Galetta of Dawn, yeah. So House Martell still somehow struggling along. The what, what happened about House Lannister at this point? I guess they're entirely... They're not entirely wiped out. There'll be some just with, like, minor lords. 25 living members. Yeah, so they're still they're still kicking around there for a little bit. Jesus. What an Iron Throne they've built there. I mean, impressive to the... It's impressive that Bran was able to do as much as he did, but it's actually way more impressive that Edma was able to keep it together, given that it's Edma Tully. Pisshead. He's depressed. He's lustful. He's proud. Widowed now, so not exactly the most competent guy. His son, Brendan II, the River Knight. Is he good? He's a very good military commander. He's actually quite... He'll make for a good king. Honorable, diligent, brave, chaste, kind, family person, a great warrior, a knight. He'll make for a good king. Can't argue with that one. Maybe Bran did have some sort of master plan, huh? He saw all the futures. You know, at one point, what was it? 14, 14 million outcomes? He saw the only one where they won. Wowie. Okay. Uh, it, it does, for, for us, make it obviously very difficult to potentially rebel. I love that we've got a giant bodyguard. Kind of forgot about that. Uh, Danny just kind of forgot about the Dothraki. There you go. Bayrek, join us. Venerable Elder, Diamond, join us. Excellent. And now we can just sit around twiddling our thumbs waiting for castles to build. Fantastic. We're still one over. What have we got? I suppose we've got Maelstrom Watch down in the south. Do we want it? I, I mean... It's Jon Snow. Of course he doesn't want it. That's kind of the that's kind of his thing, right? We'll just give that away. We'll have someone run that for us. Four out of four. So what we have now is Castle Black. We've got the Night Fort. We've got Woods Watch by the pool. And we've got uh, East Watch. When we m take the Shadow Tower, I guess we'll give away Woods Watch or something like that. Yeah, we will. Because that's uh, not been upgraded at all. Well, how's our money looking? Bear in mind, our money is going to take a massive dive. Oh. Wow. Uh, Right. And there's me saying, oh, Dawn is still held by a Martell. Uh, not anymore. The tiny girl, very coincidentally, the final Martell, died under suspicious circumstances. And now, the Lord, uh, the, the King of the Iron Throne, has, sit to, uh, uh, has seen fit to give Magor Tully, his grandson, Dawn. That's not a decision that's going to be taken well. Maybe Edmer is like four or five D chess at this point. So many Ds I can't keep track. It's like the art channel. To the glorious Lord Paramount John, may you live in comedy contempt when he wants to be a commander. We're not going to fight his wars for him. His, his extremely aggressive wars. He is playing the game the way it's meant to be played, right? He is landing his family members. He's expanding his borders, taking over Pentos. He's got a loyal vassal running it for him. I mean, massively loyal vassal looking after it for him. He's conquered parts of Andalos there too. Taking back his holy sites. He's got House Hightower and the Reach, which are, again, massively loyal. He's managed to land his own family member in Sunspear. I mean, shit. Bran was impressive for dealing with all his enemies in the way he did. Ed Tully is way more impressive at this point. I'm not going to lie. When he took power, I was like, nah, this is not going to work. Because in the show, obviously, he's made out to be a... And this is a direct sequel to the show. He is made out to be kind of a bit of a blundering idiot, particularly on the, the, the kind of for lack of a better word, King's Moot they had. Whether they were stood there electing the king, that's where they elected Bran. And Matulli was laughed at, and everybody thought he was a big dick. Now look at him. Who's the dick now? And it was Sansa that told him to sit down and stop making a fool of himself. Oh, who's made a fool of herself now? I'm Team Edma. Honestly, the guys won me over. Might not have won John over, of course, but me personally, I'm, I think this is impressive. The guy, the guy really said, you know, bet. <laughs> and, and took it all back. I'm impressed. What a, what a legend. What can we do then? Convert to local culture, because uh, Castle Black is, is Northman. We're not interested in that. We'll see if we can flip it over again to work for... Uh, to see if we can make it work for the... Um, let's, let's take off our battle mask, too, because we don't need it anymore. John. John, take off your mask. John, it's over. He's still... Oh, my God. Wildling Warlord. Holy shit. What is this? I never noticed this before. Um, we get massive levies, levy reinforcement, morale of armies, level 14, 1,400 prestige. Oh, this is a mechanic I didn't even know existed. 
The wildlings cannot be ruled by the way southerners can. They laugh at notions of blood and birthright, but they will gladly rally behind a strong leader who can prove their worth, forming armies of men and women alike larger than any in the Seven Kingdoms. Oh, shit. The more prestige you have, the more likely the wildlings are to follow you. Right. Okay. Well, that is interesting because Aya is the more prestigious of the daughters currently. It's, it's very little in it. Let's give her... We can't land her. Why? She can't hold a land tile. Oh, shit. Um, can we give her anything that would give her prestige? We can give her a loot, which will give her month prestige. How do we make it so that Aya can inherit? Because I am Team Aya at this point. She's okay, but Aya is a superior commander and a superior wordsmith in every way. The wildlings won't follow Lyanna as much as they will follow Aya. It even says it on the tab, you know, a strong warrior. And she's not only a strong warrior, but she's got that old god's gift, which they'll respect. They do respect. It's a plus 10 opinion. How do we make it so Aya is more likely to take over? The most powerful child of the ruler succeeds. I mean, she's only powerful in terms of age <laughs> which i would argue isn't really isn't really helping much anyway let's have a, an arm wrestling competition against this old lady danny the bear danny i don't want it take her out take her out john what sort of weakling are you uh we gain more renown she might challenge us to a duel i, I like to think john snow said it in a funny way and then a, a quietly apologized to her afterwards anyway let's draw rub rubert not rupert rubert rubert weir spear that's a hell of a name uh, you're not even managed to touch Jon Snow. He's too fast. He's fast as fuck, boy. He's done. Back on your feet, Rupert. We gain a little bit. Oh, he actually gains prestige. Rupert, Lord Paramount, Jon gains 20 Oh, we gain the prestige, but it's being sent from, from him. Right, got it. Dear father, I accept your loot. There you are, daughter. Learn to play the loot. The wildlings will respect you more for it. And that's not even a joke. A group of giants has been seen passing through my lands. Ah. Oh. They may prove useful. I will speak to them. 65% chance of a soldier called Neg appears in our court. Sorry, my phone keeps stinging. Hey. Who's, the, who's trying to get in? Th it's 8 a.m. Piss off. Their presence will not be tolerated. I will drive them out of my lands. Why would you do that? A soldier named Murr appears in the court of rebels or leave them be. No, speak to, uh, speak to him. Lord Paramount John. Oh, what on earth are you doing? I and a group of powerful... Loyalists have prevented an ultimation to High Chief Torgren of the Miltwater. No, I gave him that power. And we have presented an ultimatum demanding that he ends his reign of misrule and abdicates in favor of yourself. Domeric, you pisshead. After the duel, Rupert Weirspear asked me for advice on fighting. A little taken aback, I happily offered to train him on occasion. Today, he thanks me for being a good teacher. And friend, he adds, dunking me on the back before he cocks his head in the direction of the sparring grounds. Sure. Uh, again, why not? There you go. We became friends with the guy that we beat. That's nice. Oh, look. He's old. Age 50. Holy crap. There he is. We can command them to end their war. Yeah, end your war. No, I put him in, we, we put him in charge. Please don't go to war on our behalf to have him abdicate back to us. I'm only going to give him the title back. Now we wait. I don't know if we're actually going to be able to colonize the Shadow Tower before... Before John dies, I mean he's fifty. He's not. He's not on his way out. Don't get me wrong. He could easily live for another twenty years if we're if we're lucky with it. But it's going to be very close, I think. Uh, Aya, give her a little power. Put her in charge. I mean, she is. We're not only doing that from the perspective of maybe we want her to rule, but she is legitimately the best justiciar in the land by a long, long way. And now we wait. Eventually, of course, the play is going to be getting independence, right? How the hell we're going to do that, I have no idea. The Iron Throne has never been more powerful. Look at Volantis, too, going out there conquering all the Dothraki lands. That's impressive. Nothing else really super strange happening out there. The Iron Throne is definitely the most interesting part of, of you know, what's going on. Which is very convenient, given that's where we live right now. But not for long. Brienne's still alive, which is also kind of impressive. How, how old are you now, Brienne? You've got to be like 60? 53. Wow. 32 Marshall as well is like crazy good. Bruised legs, bruised dominant. She's still fighting. She's won a regional tournament. She's won, or she's at least fought in 72 duels. She's won a small tournament. The Kingsguard. Oh, she's disreputable. Oh, no. Like I said, maybe when she pledged to sound to Bran, she went off the deep end a little bit. Got a little, uh. 
got a little depressed and now she's disreputable. Oh dear. She's won a lot of grand tournaments as well. She bruised her hand. She's burning fat. She's trying to get she's trying to get lean. She's on a cut. Perfect shape. Okay, well there you go. She's been trying a lot in her body to prove it. That's a hell of a mental image. Thank you for that one. The vassals of Beyond the Wall now view you re with respect. Hey, cool. So that's another Game of Thrones mechanic. Which, I again, would be fantastic to add to the base game. Uh, bearing in mind, uh, uh, depending on the amount of rebels that you shut down and fearful actions you do. So we have 44.024 fear. You get that from executing people and, and kind of those type of things. Fearful actions. Not necessarily tyrannical actions, but fearful actions. That will allow you to rule with a bit more respect. So as you see, their vassals are 30% less likely to join hostile factions or start plots. We get a little less uh, revolt risk and a little more plot defense as well. And we've got the wildling on top too, right? Oh, does that not take precedent? Any oh, there it is. Wildling Warlord. Yeah, got it. So level 14 is 1400 prestige. I presume that'll update maybe at the start of the year when we've got 1500 prestige. So does that increase actual... Uh Levy size. Yeah, 35% minimum levy size is huge. That might be how we raise the army. Right now, we get no troops in our own domain, which is really, really worth mentioning because that modifier... Burger vassals, noble vassals, clergy vassals. Okay, so it only affects our, our vassals anyway. It doesn't actually affect our troops. So all that modifier is what's giving us this giant army. Oh, shit. Speaking of which... Brienne tried to... So Adam Mattelli tried to arrest Brienne, but she was she she basically couldn't be arrested because she's an absolute beast with sorry five hundred and sixty personal combat five hundred and sixty we've got one hundred and thirty five we're basically the best fighter amongst the wildlings right my god it's a shame you can't sort by personal combat because I would love to see who the hell could beat her she could fist fight this dragon and she would whoop him he would stand no chance. 337, Master Carl of Eagle Town. That's fairly impressive. We're 135, 560, Brienne. No one else is going to even come close. I mean, we're up there. We've dropped a lot from where he's hit his old age, but she's also hit her old age. She's not in her prime anymore. And she's still 560. Dual experience plus 360. Jesus Christ. Even without the dual experience, she'd still be the best in the world. She is like on this whole other level of monster. That's so impressive. Wow. That's actually nuts. We're never going to see another character like her. I think that might be the strongest character that's ever lived. Even more like the, the Mountain and the Hound and anybody like that. Uh, she was released. Whatever crime she did was obviously fairly, fairly innocuous. Yeah, she still... She went mad. What did he do to her? Did he torture her in the dungeon or something? She lost Drunken and gained Lunatic. Oh, Brienne's gone insane. A whole life spent, you know, swearing fealty and oaths to other people. Only to find out that all of these people are horrible. Aya has already smoothed over relations with Magnus Steer of Then. The guy who rebelled against us. Not really rebelled against us, but took a legal loophole to declare war and try and prove himself. That's... I mean, my god, how do we make you, how do we make you successor? I, I, that's the thing. I just don't think we can, because she's older. Can we... Can we do something with her? I don't think there is anything we can do. Are they both part of a society too? I wonder. Um, let's have a look at you again. Uh, if we look at your prestige. Diplomacy skill, Lady of Beyond the Wall, Sworn, sworn Shield. Sworn Shield is... Uh, sworn Shield, I think, is the rank. But I have no idea where. I presume she'd be part of the skin changes. Oh, the three-eyed crow. Well, that's interesting. I don't know if he's supposed to still exist. Because that is basically who Bran became. One with the weirwoods. Maybe Bran turned back into old man form. Who knows? Um, can we see the full list of the skin changes? I presume she's in the skin changes society, right? She is. She's, again, she's an elder. Oh, shit. She's like the third highest rank. Wow, Wowee. Man, she's living her own life out there. No, she's like already... <laughs> she's already done more than we have. Effectively, we're already ranked her in our society. Good lord. Well, there's not really much for us to do now. We, we literally can't go to war with anybody. We are in a, a complete deadlock. We can't go raiding. We can't head across the seas. Unless they do something with the religion. Unless somebody takes over as a separate religion. Unless there's a big civil war and we get brief independence. At which point we could maybe head out somewhere and do some raiding. 
this is it. Like, we are, we are here for good now. Maybe we now flip to business to try and help restore. This was always John's life goal, right? Try and restore the Night's Watch better. You know, focus a lot on the on running the... Oh! Hey, there you go. After many months of rebuilding, the ruins of Eastwatch are finally resembling a habitable place once more. Many immigrants have been flocking to the land, which means even a levy can now be supported. How did... Well, they restored Eastwatch faster than they restored Castle Black. Significantly faster. Jesus. I mean, it's all random, right? It's all random, but that one just happened to progress. Maybe the damage to Eastwatch wasn't as bad, which is bizarre, because in the show it literally exploded. Um... <laughs> so there is that. Hello. Uh, he's invited us to a grand feast. Oh, God. I mean, it's an extreme... Why we can't just say, no, I'm not really interested. I don't know. That's a bit of an extreme response. I will attend this feast over my dead body. Because my concern is, you probably will. Starks and feasts down south never really end well. I guess we'll do it. We, I mean, honor kind of beholds us to it, right? Let's see what happens. What's our what's our decision here? Ask for help managing titles. No, we don't need that. Thank you. I know exactly what I'm doing. You want to educate our daughter, Mylara? Uh, no. What we are going to do, because she's being trained in combat, we're going to have John do it. Val will be a little upset because basically we're saying, no, 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 let us do it. But John's got nothing else to do. He's got no... You know, the round basically runs itself at this stage. He's got a massive council. His daughter is incredible. She's running the diplomacy side of things. We've arrived in the Red Keep where King Agmar has grouped his wall into a feast. Bread, salt, and fine arbor gold has been served as is the guest right. Thank you for having us. My vassal. Uh, impressed with vague promises, of course. We're not, we're not worried about diplomacy. We're down south right now. Edmund Tully tried to have... Well, I see. I'm getting the strangest of, of patterns here. Emma Tully at the feast... Trying to have Sansa arrested. Not quite a wed redding, but... A, a, a wed redding? Yeah, not quite a wed redding, but bloody close enough. That's why I said Starks need to stop going to bloody feast down south. And look what's happened. Tried to arrest Sansa. She dodged it this time. Fast as fuck, boy. And now the realm is in rebellion. Um, The rebel's cause is just. Whoa, that would be a plot twist, wouldn't it? We'd back Sansa. He wouldn't back Sansa. We're not going to join Sansa. If we were able to... Uh, now's not the right time for rebellion either. If they turn up at Castle Black while we're building it and knock it down, we lose all of that gold, all of that progress. It puts the wildling people, you know, at, in jeopardy again. We need a little more stability. We could say we won't concern ourselves with it and go independent, which I think is exactly what we'd do. We're not going to fight. We're not We're not going to join Edmund Tully in fighting Sansa. Again, honorable to a fault. But last time we fought a war down south, the Thens rebelled because they didn't approve of the war. And I I mean, I get it. Why would we go to rally against a lady or more, or joining a guy who have both at some point over the past living memory invaded us? We're not going to do that. What we can do is raid our, raise our troops. We could hire some ships and we could go raiding. We'd have to be bloody fast, though. Because, I mean, this, this might be quite a protracted war. Oh, I didn't mean to hire those. Shit. I misclicked. Dad. Ah, 145 gold gone. We can't even hire friggin' troops now. You bollock. Well, that's a shame. We need 30 gold to hire some ships. We'll be able to. We'll, we'll get the money back. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't panic. Uh, they're all the same cost. 0 0.45 monthly cost. So we're not going to. We're, we're still profiting, right? Give me those. That's very, very. That's very annoying. That's very, very annoying. But these things happen. Uh, steer. Chief of Then, you can you can join us. Uh, you, as long as you're collecting taxes, you can oversee construction, whatever. God shit. We we can in theory make back more money. Don't worry. Daughter Liana remains outside of our fold. Yeah, recruit to the Warrior Lodge. Join us, Liana. She's not up for it. I carved my own path, Father. Please let me. Hero Chief w Rory is a bore, Father. She's not. She's not. In, she's not interested. That's a little disappointing. Okay, let's try this again. Hopefully that war will go on for long enough where we can recoup the loss of me accidentally hiring troops that we didn't need. And I believe you can't even make mercenaries into raiders, can you? Which is why, why I dropped them down there. Okay, well, let's send these, this lot out first. I presume we're still... Yeah, we're still making money. Send this lot out first. Go raiding. That helps if you mark them as raiders. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not concerned myself. Now, there's another war, so now we've got double independence for, for a little while, potentially. Um, let's get some good commanders on here. Let's do a little raiding. They've probably been pressuring him for years. Maybe he's been a little curious, you know? Maybe we'll go and raid specifically slaver slavers. Try and stay a little more morally upstanding. Because, you know, we're Jon Snow after all. 
Look at this place. Why can't you why can't you start a game on this place? That's what I want to see. You can actually play as the 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 giants. Incoming mod confirmed. Lorath. That's not slavery, right? Lorath, Lorath don't do slavery. Pentos do slavery. But they're part of the Iron Throne. So or if we turn up there and raid them that we we might be in trouble. Do they even perform slavery anymore? Because they've been I guess not. What about Tyrosh? A slave owner. Tyrosh it is. I thought Tyrosh was, was one of the options. Let's see what we can do then. We're going to have to be fast. Once the gold is in the ships though, the gold is ours, right? We can just only physically raid. Someone's playing Mortal Kombat. Uh, we can only physically raid whilst the realm is at war. While we're not determined, while we're not governed by those those laws. Uh, move the move the troops into the capital. Oh, we're in the wrong we're on the wrong sea, idiot. Right, move the troops into the capital. There's no land crossing or sea crossing or river crossing or straight crossing. So now that we're here, we're like we're here. We can we can really unload. Oh, the money. Oh, the money. Here we go. This is some good shit. The boats are filling up 33 gold already. You gotta pay off all the money that I lost in a, in a mistake of bureaucracy. John Snow's like, hire fighters. Oh, there's some more money. Thank you. Said hire fighters. And, and you know, it was, it was on John Snow. He was very, maybe, maybe he was like, hire mercenaries. Maybe he was like very vague with it. So they bring back troops. And he's like, no, you idiot. I meant ships. But it's John's fault. It's, it's absolutely John's fault. Not mine. Wouldn't be my fault. Um, Tarashi Landing. Not really much gold there. Little Tarash has some gold. What about Kylos? Um, Mir? They are slave owners. Where's the Mir capital? Um, I guess we'll just go for the actual capital proper. Ironborn longships cut through the water swift in shore. Hence we have pursued, uh, I mean, wildling longships cut through the water swift in shore. To be fair, wildlings aren't exactly supposed to raid overseas, are they? But Jon Snow's teaching them. Uh, don't attack the seven thrones. This is, this is uh, uh, the seven kingdoms. This is his, you know, his mindset behind it. The wildling way of life is raiding. Let's do it overseas when we're not harming anybody except slavers, right? We're we're, Rob we're the Robin Hood of Rob Robin Hood, Robin Hood of wildlings. I mean, we are the Robin Hood. And nice, we've done it. Our ship managed to uh, take out some some people. Excellent. Fifteen prestige, fifteen party, twenty gold. We'll ignore the the, the event text talking about. Uh, no, I'm not firing her. Fuck off. We'll ignore the events text talking about wildlings. Uh, sorry, Ironborn. Alright, here we are. Mir. Now, they haven't got much gold here, but it should be relatively safe because they also haven't got many troops. It's a shame we can't... It'd be good if we could burn somewhere down. We need someone with quite a low levy size, though. Oh, we could go for Kios. We'd probably make more money than just going to these random... Oh, they've already... They've already woken up. Alright, see you later. What about, um... See, little Tyrosh, if we can land there, we've got just enough troops to, to go for a full siege. And now that we've left, they've dropped their troops. So if we go again, it's also a very safe siege because they're not going to boat bomb into this many troops. Oh, sweet. My Lara. Gaining a little bit more stewardship there. Here you go. If we can knock this whole place down. Oh! Gloriously died in battle while raiding. Good for him. Giant raiders. Could you imagine it? What a sight to see. This whole guy is just, he's in a, a massive sail ship, like a frigate, riding it like a rowboat. Turns up at the gates of Tyrosh. Legendary Jon Snow with his giant raiders. Holy crap. I mean, the rest of them will probably think giants are a, a, a myth. Like a giant, well, we can't actually bring most of this gold back. But when we knock the place down, it just gets instantly added to our, to our wealth. Oh! Okay. Uh, we're no longer allowed to, allowed to raid. It ran out. Damn it. Uh, Lord Dalton Greyjoy is a traitor and enemy of the realm. Probably because he did exactly what we did and started raiding. He probably raided the Iron... Uh, the, the Seven Kingdoms, though. He probably raided into the Iron Throne. Whereas we raided externally. So we made a safe play. He'll never know. Are you, uh, I mean, what, what is, is Little Tyrosh going to send a message to the Iron Throne? Dear King Edmund Tully, a giant turned up at our city and tried to steal our gold. I mean, he's not going to believe them. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Odd Ice Guard died a sickly infant. Now, that's very, uh, you might say that's very, very strange. Um, okay. So, yes, we got left with, we, we ended up just paying off the money that I spent on. Nope, we didn't. We ended up losing money. Oh! Eastwatch is done already! What are you talking about? Well, there we are. Wasn't ideal, but that's something. 
Wait, Eastwatch is finished before Castle Black has even started. Well, that doesn't seem fair. Well, let's throw down a couple of peasant farms then, trying a little bit of money back. I do, I, you know what, I think maybe investing heavily in the peasant farms early on might not be a bad idea, to be completely honest. Let's give Deep Lake away. Oh, and you're sure we can't land you at all? There's nothing I can do with you. Give her the Valyrian sword. Would that be enough? Probably not. Shit. Um, well, let's give Deep Lake away because we can't hold it. It'll actually be better for our taxes if we give some of this stuff away. And I guess we'll just keep saving up then, huh? That's a real shame. That could have been a golden opportunity. I, I messed that up. That's entirely on me. Bureaucracy issues. We're not being your bloody commander. Stop asking. Right. Worship the ancestors. Let's do it. John at this point. Prosperity and growth for our realm, of course. It's it's worked perfectly. Would he at this point? Bear in mind, we've, we've carved um, idols. We haven't had a feast. Would he at this point sacrifice this ruinish former slave? I don't think he would do that. That's that's fucked up. Would he hold a feast? Probably not. I think he would. I, I think he's got to remain humble. He is humble, John. Humble and content, John. Throwing a feast in their honor or whatever. I think it'd be a very private thing to him only. So that's what we're going to stick with. And it hasn't failed us so far, right? Wow. I can't believe Eastwatch is already finished. That's actually nuts. Meanwhile, Castle Black, nothing has changed. So hang on. We've got one castle on Eastwatch beyond... Yeah, we've got the Green Guard. I guess we've just got to wait. When these characters die, when, when these ruins disappear, it should come back to us. It should have done it anyway. But I think while we were at war, things were a little bit... Uh, things were a little bit messy. What we could try and do is do... um. Oh. We can change success and succession law. Elective monarchy. What if we go elective monarchy and then vote for or gavel kind? Oh, man. Uh, nominate a successor. We just nominate Aya. What if we go for diplomacy and democracy rather than rule of the strong? Because rule of the strong isn't really working right now. Let's do it. I feel like I feel like Jon Snow would do that. You know, it's effectively giving up power. We're giving it to the wildlings. You know, we're saying you guys get to vote. So now we just vote for Arya. And there we are. Look, everybody's voting for Arya. Everybody wants her to rule. Not only did we get what we wanted. I, I think Magnus Tear is probably... <laughs> everybody's voted for Arya except Magnus Tear is like, I vote for Magnus Tear. You know who would be a good ruler? Magnus Deer. Yeah, he's goddamn right. More likely, they're actually all just voting with us. Because they know we're an incredible ruler. But her skills and traits and stats and prestige and everything is definitely helping her cause. They're not going to vote for a bad ruler, right? And you can actually see their reasons for it if we view the electors. Um, our candidate. Uh, I trust the judgment of a ruler I like. I like her. She's a just ruler. She's a good warrior. She's a diplomat, steward, diplomacy, pious woman, prestigious, wildling, etc., etc. Everybody likes her. Every single person will vote for her. Besides Magnus Tear, who doesn't like her because she's a heathen. And that's because he's a different religion, right? But that he's the only person who'll ever have that problem. This was a great idea. We've given the Wildlings a, 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 a vote. And I think that's exactly what John would be up for. We've given them the opportunity to say, no, we don't like this ruler. But they all like her. Because of course they do. This is win-win. This has been fantastic. Thank you all for watching. We're going to leave it there for today. Maybe made a bit of a fucky-wucky. Uh, higher in... Troops that we definitely didn't need. That's 150 gold we could have had in our pocket still, but never mind, I guess. Uh, let's leave it there. Apologies about the episodes being late recently. You know, YouTube now takes about three hours to process a CK2 episode. I used to wake up in the morning, get breakfast, record CK2. That's what I've done today. Uh, but I know for a fact this episode is not going to be up on time because, hey, Susan needs to make sure I'm not saying naughty words or selling things to you that I shouldn't be. So that's that. Anyway, see you all tomorrow.